The Central Division of the BMG Monster Jam Series is back at the Superdome in New Orleans. The points are very, very close around the cut line among these 15 Monster Jam drivers. We'll see which eight leave above the cut line and which one will find themselves chasing it into the final week of action. BMG Monster Jam for the Mercedes-Benz Superdome is coming up next. It's about that time, so put it up, let's get it on. Made it this far, time to show the world was number one. Number one, pull it up to the line, let's do it. Let's do it. Anything in my way, I'm running through. I'm running through. I watch the lights and my hands are sweaty. I hear the people screaming, so you better get ready. Yeah. Cause when it drops, I'ma take the shot. Rock the spot, make it hot. Cause it's about that time. It's about that, and it's about that. It's been a long time. Uh, it's about that time. It's about that, cause it's about that. It's been a long time. Uh, it's about that time, it's about that time, it's been a long time, yeah, it's about that time, it's about that, it's about that time, time, up, uh, up. Uh. Oh, 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 oh. It's been a long time. It is always a fun event for the Central Division drivers as we head to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm Joe Cassie Lance to me, Trey Bardo. Trey, the Superdome, one of the most historic venues in Monster Jam, and we're here, and this looks like it is a very unique course for these 15 Central Division drivers. What do you expect is going to be the plan of attack for tonight's event here in New Orleans? I mean, Joe, this course looks nothing like we're used to. I mean, this is almost classic, more north towards the, you know, the iconic area of Monster Jam. And Ling, look, look at all the crush cars out there. There's, there's so many. Yeah, this is going to be a fun night. I mean, there are obstacles that are made for crushing cars. You'll see here, there's two cars right there that you see sent down. There's bus stacks, there's van stacks, there's car stacks, and even try this little car pyramid right here. So we'll see what these drivers do to try and claim the freestyle victory in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. The point's very close. But Chris Jericho is pulled away in the points in the Mohawk Warrior. But the cutoff is amazing. Drivers like Eli Bright, Keegan Thompson, Tim Gary, all below the cut line entering this event. We'll see which of them can try and pull it out and get above the top eight in points. So we'll go take a look at the field of trucks for New Orleans. Starting us out, Laura Chung in back we got Dragonoid. Then we have Alien Invasion, John the Beaver, and by the way, Black Pearl, it's Cletus Jeffries. In Max D, it's Tim Gary, Medusa has Matt Moso, and Driving Iron Outlaw, it's Anthony Lopez. Then we have Bruce with Nicholas Morhees in Soldier of Fortune. It's Brett Seaver. And by the wheel of Avenger, we have Ronald Kennington. In Northern Nightmare, it's Keegan Thompson. Scarlet Bandit has to met Oscar in the Gravedigger. It's Eli Bright. Then the final three, Bounty Hunter with Lathan Strickland, Mohawk Warrior, Chris Jericho, and Donkey Kong, last week's winner, Matt as well. So, Trey, we're getting ready to get going. Very pumped up for this event because I think it's going to be something like we've never seen before and something that we've maybe never seen before. Laura Schmidt back in on Dragonoid coming out first, Trey. Yeah, we, um... It's been a rough, rough couple weeks for her. I don't. I, I think you'd have to agree with that one, Joe. Yeah. Ever since winning week one, it has <laughs> really been a disastrous season for Laura Chung, and she could find herself below the top eight points if she does not do well tonight. So you have to know she's really looking to set the bar high. And right there, big air off the back of the racing lane for one of her first hits. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know if we've ever seen bad luck follow a driver that won. I mean, this bad before. It's just crazy. It seems like. Ever since then, like you said, it's just every hit she's taken either breaks a truck or puts her on her lid. And you think about last week in Chicago where she did the backflip and was going into sidewalls but got shut down as she was near the wall and maybe a little bit of controversial judgment right there is if she should have been shut down or not. But that's what she just made and she just wasn't happy about it. She said, that's part of it. I'm moving on to next. I want to go out there and win a trophy hunt. Right now, she's doing a great job starting out and already 50 seconds into the run of this back on Dragonoid. Yeah, we'll have to see how, uh, you know, these drivers handle the uh, crush car aspect. I mean, not to say we haven't had crush cars in the past, but with this capacity of them, well, looks oh, like she's going yeah. for the pyramid. How's this going to go? Oh, look at that. <laughs> right over that yellow car. I, I think I found my new op favorite obstacle, Joe. Yeah, can we get that every week, please? <laughs> look at now she's going crazier in these final 15 seconds. That was so smooth. Oh, my. But, uh, no, yeah, that was pretty cool. There were 10 seconds left, though. She going for the back flip? is first truck out first one to go for it oh. losing hard losing the hood on the backfield puts it back down and into a wheelie oh. wow look at the start of this run i mean 
Holy cow, Laura Chung setting the bar pretty high, but I, if this is anything to say for it being just the first run, Joe, I, I think we're in for a treat. Don't hit the steps. <laughs> yeah, she was getting pretty close. They may have shut her down with uh, how fast she was heading towards those steps, but that was a really good run for Laura Chung in the back of Gun Dragonoid. Let's look at the backflip one more time, because right here, this led to a, th this was the final move of the run, and it led into a wheelie as well. You can see not enough rotation, maybe not enough speed going into a tray. Um... It's a really weird place for a backflip ramp, so I don't know if you're able going to be able to get enough speed if I'm going to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, you're going to have to like back up to the wall. <laughs> Maybe try and get speed right there. Perfectly executed into a wheelie. So we'll see what the judges think for the score. A solid way to start out. A 23 for Laura Chung in the back end on Dragonoid. We'll see what that puts her at the end of the night, but that was a pretty solid way to start out competition here in the Superdome. Now we have Alien Invasion, John the Beaver Trey, below the cut line, entering this event just two weeks left until we get to the last chance event. So John the Beaver looking to go big here in the Alien Invasion, starting out over the double jump and cleared it with ease. I mean, you know, like we were talking about, you know, these drivers aren't really used to a track like this, so this might be his big opportunity to, you know, gain some big points here. If, you know, he has a really good run and other drivers have some bad luck here, so we'll have to see how it goes for Alien Invasion. John Beaver has been the epitome of bad luck for the team in Mountain Gym career. Last season at Black Stallion did not do all that well. Uh, this season, Alien Invasion, he's just had some some mechanical mishaps, not goes way. Think about, you know, the first week where he had some amazing saves and a great start to his run, but ended up broken on top of a dumpster. They didn't let him go off of that. So uh, John Thiefer has had the potential for good runs in the past and has had some really good runs in the past, but the bad luck has just followed him all throughout his career. And oh, right oh, here, oh, he's no. in trouble and a great job putting a down tray. Talk about bad luck there. That could have ended up way worse than it did, but a very nice save there by Alien Invasion. He's going to gun it for the double jump. Cleared it easily. So John the Beaver going all out. Going to deck that bus stack. Get the franchise as well. He'll go to this bus stack and get some more nice air off it. So Alien Invasion, John the Beaver going all out. Oh, jeez. it in, and look at that wheel stand on the crush cars. That was amazing. I thought it was going to go straight up and over, I'm going to be honest with you, but luckily he was able to pull out of it here with 10 seconds remaining. What's he going to do for his final hits? Huge air off the pack of the MX Hill. John the Beaver going big, trying to contend with Laura Chung just after she got the lead from the first drug out. That move will count as it came at zero. Buford airing it out and flipping it over forwards. Joe, this is just our second truck out. I mean, both of these runs so far have been electrifying. I mean, this one... Uh, you think it's lead taken? I think it's going to be close, Trey. I think both these runs very, very similar in aspect. This save, though, very, very good for John Thiefer. But, Trey, I think they were watching last night in Philadelphia. Those runs <laughs> there were massive. I think they're trying to one-up them. It's crazy to think that we're already asking that question, if they're going <laughs> to take the lead or not. We're only two trucks in. And look at this final hit. It just landed on the rear tires and bounced it over. We'll see what the judges think for John the Buford here as the scores are coming down from the judges. And Trey, by half a point, he'll take the lead. It's a 23.5 for Alien Invasion, so two trucks out, two leaders, a 23.5 and a 23. We'll see if Cleo Shifries and Black Pearl can contend with John the Buford's run of a 23.5. Wow, what a first hit that was. Jeffrey's going big already. I mean, look at these drivers, right? they are full out. And it might be, we've seen, and we've talked about this whole season, the Central Division is maybe the most competitive division of the three, and the points show that. It is so close and so tight, the cut line. You have drivers like Eli Bright, Keegan Thompson below the cut line, Trey. You just don't see that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's a good, you can't say it's a good and bad thing. It's good for the fans and us, because it brings so many memories to this, you know. It, it's so fun to watch, but it's bad, because... For these drivers, I mean, you make one mistake, you could easily find yourself out of this thing. Yeah, and that's the, you know, Cleus Jeffries, you know, he's had a really solid start to his season, but last week did not go his win and dropped him down a little bit in points. He's trying to rebound here in New Orleans. He almost squirrely over that, but the got over it, and now he's into the second half of the run tray. So, so far, Cleus Jeffries, good solid momentum, but maybe needs to pick it up a little bit. The first two maybe just a little bit better. Yeah, it seems like this track's really good at you. You have got a lot of space and, uh, you know, jumps you can combine with to create some good momentum here from what we've saw so far. A nice hit off the back of the MX Hill. Lands it right on the other side of it. So nicely done for him. Is he going to be the first one to tackle the bus? There he goes. Up over the bus. He gets over, Trey. <laughs> that, was a, that, was a, that was a graceful hop. That was. No go for that with 10 seconds left off of it. And oh, whizzing. No. Oh, it hits off the ramp. He's trying to save it. Trey, it's on the other side. And it's going to park on the side. <laughs>
Look at that. We balanced it. That's the first truck in a while we've had balance. Yeah. Uh, first truck is abandoned. <laughs> first truck in a while, like you mentioned. That has not happened. It almost happened last night with Predator, but Delello was able to get it done off that. Right here, this backflip, maybe just not enough speed again. But once again, how are you going to get the speed if it's at the I side? Know. Who's going to be the one to be able to conquer this thing with the the a cleaner backflip is what I should say. Yeah, we're going to have to see if anyone wants to go after it after what the first two <laughs> attempts have been. We'll see what Cleves Jeffrey's score is for the Black Pearl as they come down from the judges. And that will tie with Laura Chung. So a 23 for the Black Pearl. So, so far, three trucks out. Two with a 23, one with a 23.5. But this next man might try and break that. It's Tim Gary and Max D coming out below the cut line. Trey, he needs something big here in New Orleans. Well, in classic Max D fashion, he uh, started his first hit with a huge air, so hope to be able to see if he can continue that throughout the run. He's going to get a little sideways in the air there, but nothing, you know, he can't control there with the uh, braking gas being able to figure out how he wants that truck to lean. Yeah, so we'll see what Tim Gary can do here in the Superdome, going over the double. Look how easily he cleared that tray. So much speed going into it. <laughs> Got over it. Maybe could have cleared another van stack if he wanted to. Where is he going to go now? To the car pyramid, and look at him destroy that yellow <laughs> car! That's all right. I, I don't think that's going to be on top of the van by the end of this thing. Max, <laughs> he just did a slap -ily. Can we just mention that? Yeah, that's uh, th not common. <laughs> Tim Gary uh, just had the foot to the floor. Tim, I made it work. And foot to the floor up, up into that obstacle. He is getting massive air here in this Max D truck. I don't think he's too happy about starting this low in the field. Yeah, I don't think so. Fourth truck out. Oh, oh jeez. That bus stack. Gary going at these obstacles in so many different ways, trying to make it work, and so far it is working for him. He's now down to the final 30 second seats to keep the run going because he can challenge with that 23.5 set by Alien Invasion. Definitely doing a lot here. He's going to be looking for the other side of the bus stack here. How's this one going to go? What a sky wheelie! Off of the bus stack, he used <laughs> sky wheelie, got over with ease. Now 15 seconds left. Now he's starting to cross red stuff, Trey. He is going after this course. Well, I mean, if he can finish up these last about five seconds here, he might have a new challenge for the lead. He's going to completely dive the nose of the car upside down. Oh, yeah, my bounce. gosh. Did he break that shock? Look at it. It's hanging there. The shock is off, Joe. I think it's off in a bunch of different pieces. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Tim Gary went for it in the max team. We'll see if that can take the lead, Trey, from Jonathan Buford and the Alien Invasion. Look at this final hit. Oh, wow. I mean, look at that thing soar right here. They're right here. I think the front end's broke. No, it's not broke. It looked like a... Ah! Uh, oh, it's definitely broke. <laughs> yeah, it's broken, Trey. That is amazing. <laughs> Tim Gary gave it his all in those final few seconds. We'll see what the judges think of it. Trey, that is a three-way tie now for a second. Four trucks out, three with a 23, and one with a 23.5. I mean, if you're Matt Mosa Medusa, what can you do now? You might want to wake up the tiebreaker judge here soon from the way it's looking. It's going to be a close event. <laughs> So, Mosa goes start out the nice seconds with a little cross thread over the double stack. So, starting out with a different move. The judge is obviously going to love that. But him being the fifth truck out and the four scores before him are a 23.5 or a 23. Got to know Mosa might be shaking a little bit knowing that, you know, so far some really good runs going out. He doesn't want to break that chain. It's just crazy. You know, you got to think, what do you have to do? I mean, each driver's pretty much, you know, taking that bar and said, I'm going to raise it a little bit higher. So oh, no. Oh, no. Melso on his lid, kicking around. He's back into the tunnel, but back on all fours. I think they're going to shut him off here just to be safe. Just because he is in the tunnel. But, <laughs> I mean, I don't see why he wouldn't be able to continue. Yeah, I don't think that truck is hurt in any way. And there he goes. He's starting to get back going. Hits the wall a little bit. But, Trey, <laughs> the time is still going. And Moso is still going. Well, we'll have to see if that awakens anything in Medusa here. He's going to get some nice air off the little car stack there. I guess you can call that slappily as well. He's going to round it here, looking for the bus stack. How's it going to go? Wow. Just like Max, a huge sky wheelie. <laughs> it seems like one side can get you a nice little air. The other one gets you a sky wheelie. He's going to go onto his side here, upside oh, no. down. Can he pull out of this one? It's no. looking like that's not going to happen. So he will be the first driver not to fill the clock tonight. About 20 seconds left on the clock. But he definitely went big for the fans in New Orleans right here. This save as he turns was something broken in the suspension. I I mean, it definitely could be. Or, you know, the tires just caught grip and he wasn't expecting them to with the speed he was going at. So I I don't know if the suspension was broken or not. Well, all I know is that he's lucky there was a tunnel there or else he was going to be <laughs> in the wall. Yeah, that's uh, I, I can't disagree with you on that one.
And then this was the final move going over the double, and it just hits the wrong way. And one tire and sends him over to one side. He's trying to save it. They're looking at him in the gas, and right there, that tire just did not grip. It stuffed its way into the ground. You can see, it's still not spinning, actually, so might be something wrong with that end of the truck. But that was it for Matt Moe. So, obviously, time on the clock. It's a 16.5 for the Medusa. So, that is right now definitely last place by far. An unfortunate break for Matt Moe. So, right there. Now, we have Anthony Lopez out in the Iron Outlaw. Won just a few weeks ago, but last week, not so good for him. So if he rebound, he broke the truck very big in Chicago last week, hoping to maybe keep it in one piece tonight. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the team would be upset if he caught, kept it in uh, one piece. Yeah, I don't know about what you're thinking about that is. Well, uh, I think they'll be fine if it's many pieces. As long as it's winning, right? If it's, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> if it ends the you run can always early, make exceptions. Yeah, if it ends the run <laughs> early, they're not happy. He's going over the bus. Look at oh, that. Oh, he almost didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happens if you get stuck in the middle of that. So, uh, I don't, oh, oh no! Oh, it's oh no! Is that a four link? It's a four link. He broke it. He did save it, but they're not gonna let him go. We've seen it in the past, these past few weeks. Wh wh I don't know how that broke. That was that looked like a normal hit. Yeah, it did. I'm. Sh I, I mean, you have to wonder are they reusing parts from last week and trying to <laughs> fix them up? It might. I mean. Let's see if we can see anything on the way this truck lands. It, it, it is going to land on the back. Wow. I don't know. That's it, just weird. And it kicked the truck over into a barrel roll, which luckily came back. I don't know if the, the body's necessarily hurt, but definitely the suspension's still hurting that Iron Outlaw. Two weeks in a row. Really bad incident right there for the Iron Outlaw. Let's see what the judges think. Obviously, a lot of time on the clock. Didn't even complete halfway. It's 11 for Anthony Lopez and the Iron Outlaw. So now he'll sit in last place currently as we're nearly halfway through. Brutus Nicholas Morgan has had a terrible season trade. Second to last points. He's looking to stop the bleeding here in New Orleans in the Superdome. He's looking to maybe go big with it. 90 seconds starts over the bus stack. Well, I mean, Team Scream. And it uh, seems like so far with this track, you know, you get some good moments and some nice air. So it, it might suit him. It might. I mean, he's been trying to go big this season, but it just has kind of hurt him. But Trey, you know, one signature move he's done at every event so far, the donuts. We'll have to see if he can uh, continue the trend here. That was a nice wheel on the downside of that ramp. He's going to flip it around here. And, well, oh. Joe, look what you were just saying. There they are. And he's, uh, I thought he was going to go maybe more near the center, but he <laughs> went right down towards the wall. There's a lot of room for donuts, but he chose maybe the, the, the one spot you wouldn't choose. That's all right. I mean, he still got them. He's still the first truck to get them, too. Yeah. So the judges are going to give him some extra points for that one. Yeah, I think so. So Nicholas Morty's first driver to do Don's tonight. Nice. Yeah, Sky really right there. Oh. Nosing it down. Turned into a nice move there. A nice little combination there. Oh, no. Ooh. Is he going to be able to pull out of this? Great nice save. save by Brutus. So Nicholas Morty's going big so far early on. Going to the back of the double now. Going to clear. Look how far he went. <laughs> I think that's the farthest we've seen off the back side of that ramp. For the bus. Oh, he crushed oh, it in. Oh, no. no. Oh, not only did he crush the bus tray, he may have just crushed the top of the truck. That was, man, that was not what I was expecting to come out of that. Oh, look how he crushed that van, too. I mean, this was a nice I, endo, I guess yeah. you would consider that. It's not a moonwalk. It's an, it's an endo. That was a big combination move, though. He went off <laughs> that. Endoed it down, then went to that car stack, and then did a save off the car stack. So, I mean, that was a really big move for Nicholas Morris and the Brutus. Yeah, but uh, oh, this last hit, though, didn't uh, work out the best for him. I'm, I don't know what happened, what went wrong, but this hurts. Do you just, just, oh, do you oh think my, it was the that's bus, right on the top. Do you think it was the bus folding in like it did that maybe just kicked it off? It, it has to be. It's a 17 for Nicholas Morris. Obviously, he left time on the clock about 20 seconds. An unfortunate end for Nicholas Morris in the Brutus. As now we have Brett Sierra out. The Soldier Fortune Trey has been so consistent this season, but he sits right at the cut line. He like right separate the cut line, right above it. So what is the mentality for Brett Sierra coming in here? He's above, but just barely. Let's see what can happen here. We thought he'd have a home field name advantage last yeah. week, but. Uh, it, I would say it went so so. Yeah, it was about middle of the pack for Brett right in the Soldier Field in the Soldier Field. Uh, but before he's going back to the it was next week. So uh, he's going to try and do some of the dirty things there. He's the first one did those crush cars. Well, hey, that's all right. I kind of forgot they were even there. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> Sarah said, well, I'll go for that. Maybe that they can give me a point or two for me in the first to hit that. And I was going to nice sky wheelie right there. Another nice oh. sky wheelie, but it's up on the two wheels. Kind of stuffs the wheel in and keeps it on all fours. Now he'll go for the car pyramid the other way and climb up. That, that, that yellow car is gone. 
No, they're just it's just balancing it back out on top of the van. It's alright. Yeah. There's no worries. Maybe he was told to do that, right? He they were like, yeah. hey, you have to keep that car on top of that van, please. Maybe he got a little bit of a bonus from the track crew here for not having to put it back up there if it fell off here, but we'll have to see what Pretz here can do. Nice air off of that jump's gonna land it nice and smooth on the back of the racing lane. I guess that's Nice there right there over the bus decks. Now in the final 30 seconds, Dre's starting to pick it up in the Solar Fortune. They're looking to go big for the fans here in New Orleans. Is he now down to the final 20 seconds? Go back maybe to the cars the other way. He will do that. That's another new hit though, so I mean, he can't complain. We'll see how this side goes. A lot smoother. Pull the bus back into place. <laughs> it's just like Play-Doh out there, I swear. I mean, this truck just gets folded. He's going to do nice wheelie over top of that, and that's going to be the last hit of his run here. Where is he going? <laughs> I don't know where he's going. He's a little excited they fill out the full 90 seconds and go into the middle right here. He might maybe park it. Oh, I thought he was going to go for a wheelie for a second. Ah, that's a nice spot right there. That's a nice spot right on the top of the slab right there. So it wasn't a bad run by any means, Trey, but it, it wasn't like the first few that we saw. I mean, like last week, it was so-so. Yeah. Uh, it and on honesty, I, I think it's another mid-pack run. I mean, it wasn't bad, like you said, just not really that wow. Yeah, I mean, that, that was definitely the best moment. That save, which comboed up into this this uh, car pyramid to 21.5. So that's only two points short of the lead. But when you think about it, there's four people in front of him. That's right now fifth place of the tricks that have gone out. So we'll see that place at the end. This man had a season run last uh, week. Avenger Ronald Kennington coming out. Chicago was the first time he filled the 490 seconds this season. Got him a pretty good score. We'll see what we can do here. Maybe some newfound momentum can get him a good run here in the Superdome. Well, his teammate didn't have the best of luck, so we'll have to see if it. Uh, we'll have to see if it switches around here for Avenger. We'll have to uh, watch and. Uh, oh, I thought we were about to watch a reenactment on the other bus stack. Well, it's kind of interesting. Here. His teammate Team Scream is the bottom two in points. Morty's in the Brutus, and then obviously Kennington in the Avenger. They have not had a good season, and Ronald Kennington especially. So, um, if Team Scream really wants to make it to the World Finals. They're going to have to pick it up now. It's just, it's the first season trip. That's, that's all it is. That was a nice turnaround right there. Don't give it to Avenger. That was nice. He's going to kind of <laughs> ease it over the bus. A little bit of a wheelie on top of the bus. Nothing wrong with that. I think he's trying to crush it down more. Yeah, he might be trying to fix it so he doesn't hurt himself when he goes the other way around on it. That was a very nice smooth ending on that as well. He's going to flip around here with 30 seconds left. I mean, it's been a nice run, but definitely needs to pick it up. And it's kind of like Brett Sears, right? It's had some good momentum, but uh, really needs some big moments in the well moment, especially. He's had good momentum, don't get me wrong, but uh, he needs something massive in this run to contend with that 23.5 set by Alien Invasion. Yeah, I got to agree with you here. Right here might be the moment. Oh. He's going to go for it. Flip it from no. one side to the other. He's still attempting it. He's still attempting it. No. No. <laughs> Oh, Trey, that was so close so many times to being a save, and unfortunately for Ronald Kennington, it's a flip over with three seconds left in the Avengers. Such an unfortunate break. I mean, you got to give it to him. Normally, you know, when drivers flip it from one side to the other, they don't really get a chance at saving it. But right here, he was able to control it, and he got it going. It just, just wasn't wow. enough. That is unfortunate because he had a solid run going. If he could have filled out the final 10 seconds with something big, who knows what the score could have been. But unfortunately, right there, a slow rollover back down to the ground for Ronald Cunnington in the Avenger. It's going to be a 20 point five, so that's one point behind Brett Sierra and three points behind the lead of Alien Invasion. Still trade the second truck out. John to be for an Alien Invasion sits on the hot seat. This man has got to be furious with this season. Keegan Thompson, Northern Nightmare, pretty big. A pretty big ways below the cut line, Trey. Our season one World Finals champion not having the season he's won in the Central Division. He's looking to maybe go bigger in the Superdome, maybe even win the thing. I mean, that would be a huge boost to, you know, their, that team's momentum there. But like you said, with his luck this, this season, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's been very interesting. He has had very, very poor runs the first two weeks. Last week, kind of an average run. He can really look at the pick it up here in the Superdome. Not even 30 seconds. Oh, no. For the backflip. Oh, oh, my goodness. Perfect backflip tray. Well, that's the uh, veteran at its work. I, we can call him a veteran. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the veteran has work. And so, Keegan Thompson, first one to complete the backflip in air. Remember, Laura Chung nosed it down to complete it. And 
Clear Jeffries didn't even get to complete, so he's the third one to go after it. First one to complete it in air. Now he's getting some big air and try. I think he's going to start picking it up here. Nearing the final 30 seconds, he's really going to start going big. He has to be careful, though. I mean, look oh, at this right no. here. Oh, no. Oh, my. Absolutely tumbling. He's going to attempt to pull out <laughs> of it, though. Putting it into some sidewalls. Oh. Is it? Oh, oh, no way. I can't believe that. What a save that was. Now, I don't I don't think they shut him off, Trey. I think the truck shut itself off. So if he can fire this thing back up, they're, they're definitely going to let him go. Yeah, I mean, if he can get it going again, that was a lot of heat. He's going to be able wow. to go, Joe. What can he do to end up the run, Trey? This could be a lead-taking run, maybe a season-changing run for Keegan Thompson. Huge air. Huge air. Look at him go. Oh, oh. Straight. oh, my goodness. Straight into the bus step. He's stuck. He is stuck. He's gonna <laughs> oh, oh. Trying nope. to get it off. <laughs> Still fighting, and it does get off. <laughs> what a run from Keegan Thompson. Is this the flip that he's been waiting for all season long? It could be, Trey. We'll see what the judges think, but in my opinion, that's lead taking, especially after this back flip perfectly clean, and then obviously the save, which came just soon after. I mean, like we said, it wasn't the first backflip that was completed, but it was the cleanest that was completed. So, you know, the judges are going to look up on that right there. And then just this was just amazing. Oh, he just, wow. That, that you know, jump that they built up really hurt Keegan Thompson, but it actually ended up really helping because that's this is going to be worth a lot of points for this save. It's going to be worth. <laughs> it it might have just taken the lead with that move alone. Look I mean, at that's insane the truck was able to last that long, let alone save it. Oh, and that twisted just the right way to keep it on all fours instead of tumbling back down onto its lid. We'll see what the judges think. Trey, three points. It's enough. Keegan Thompson with a 26.5 gets Northern Nightmare in the hot seat, but still some pretty big names left. Five drivers left to go, including Samet Oskin, the Scarlet Bandit. Another driver fighting for the top eight in points. Had a really good week one. The last two weeks haven't gone this way. So you can get it done. The Scarlet Bandit, huge air off of the MX Hill to start the 90 seconds. I thought it was going over already with the way that truck bounced. Oskin going for it. And, I mean, if he can adopt what he did in, in week one, that was really his best run of the season. Actually going a little bit crazy right there in the Scar of the Bandit, but gets it back down to all fours. But he had a really, really good week one event. Last week, haven't really gotten away. Last week was pretty good, obviously. This is the fifth last work out. But oh, my goodness. Wasn't anything like week one, but here he is in the Scar of the Bandit going big so far in the Superdome tray. <laughs> He's just throwing this truck around the arena right now. I mean... If the truck has space to move, he's he's flooring it and just putting it right there and hoping for the best. Here he goes for the bus stack. A lot cleaner. A lot cleaner. Uh, that's like a bus. Oz going over a nice the second after cross threading the big tabletop right here. Oh, oh. he's in trouble. On his oh, no. side, on the side, oh, trying no. to save it. Oh my what gosh. What? I think he's a little stunned after that. <laughs> he did it on top of the racing lane. Oh no. It's broken. Is it? The front is broken. Oh no. Did it break on the save? It had to have, right? I mean, he was on that side very hard. But look, he's still going after it. But he's going to have such a hard time oh. turning the truck, blowing it down, it looks like, too. I don't know if he hurt the brakes or not. But with five seconds remaining here. He's got to be aggravated. He's, he's not. Oh, he got he, there. Oh, oh. He stuffed it. And oh. Oh, oh my God goodness oh my gosh what a way I, to end the run for Samet Oskin I don't ever think we've seen a front end explode like that no but now we just have and I think that team two extreme racing have a lot of work to do well let's we'll see if we can see where this broke oh right oh, there, right there. Yep. And look, I didn't even notice that yeah oh look he was sidewalling on the broken wheel look at that thing <laughs> it's break dancing <laughs> I don't know how he pulled out of that right there, but that was an amazing save by Scarlet Bandit. Then this final move. I mean, look at this final hit. Oh! What? Watch it just watch watch he it already, just explode. He already tore the shockwave, and then right there. Oh! Oh my goodness! It's a four-link tie rod. There's the hub of the wheel. There's the shock of the wheel. The frame might be broken. Oh my gosh! Smed Oskin went for it. See the judges think it's a point short. You have to think because of the backup. So 25-5 for Smed Oskin. Still really good run, but maybe could have been the lead if he didn't break that part after the amazing save. But Trey, this man's won it before. Eli Bright in the Gravedigger.
surprised he's not just starting straight out of the tunnel. I think he's uh is he, amping is he the having fans? trouble there? I think he's amping the fans up maybe. Uh, <laughs> I was confused on why he was going forward and backwards, but we'll see how this first hit goes, Joe. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, are you surprised it held together? I'm very surprised that the broke off on that hit, but Trey, we shouldn't be surprised. In season one, when he won here, his first hit was a four-month backflip up the back of the MX Hill. Well, he we went back to the back of the MX Hill. It wasn't a four-month backflip, though. No, it wasn't, but I mean, hey, that's pretty close to as close you're going to get, at least. He is flying this truck right now. I think he wants to take the way we from Keegan. I mean, remember earlier this season, he hit the truck when it was out there left yeah. on the field. Oh, no, oh, the, no. Car, the car oh, pyramid. No. It's going to get a victim, or is it? He saved that truck out of bounds, but I mean, they're going to shut him off for safety reasons. They probably weren't the happiest he kept in it in the no. out of bounds zone, but again, credit to Eli for keeping it in it out of the out of bounds zone to save the truck, and there he goes. And he, you know, Trey, I think he's going this big. He's below the cut line, right? When has Eli Bray ever been below the cut line? Right now. Well, yeah, and I think this may be the only time in his career. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I, I got to agree with you on that one, but uh, yeah, we'll have to. Uh, it would. You know, normally the rivalry is between Gravedigger and Max D, but in this tour at least, it's between Gravedigger and uh, Northern oh, Nightmare. Oh no! Two wheel oh, Another what save! Is save again? He's gonna pull it to do a wheelie! Is something on the back broke? It looks like it's sagging down a lot lower. He might have compressed the suspension. I don't know if it might be broken too, but uh, we'll have to we'll have to see if it affects the truck anymore. To the bus crux oh, is it in? Oh. On the back, now on the front! Look at him go! Oh! Yes, 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 yes. oh he no. saved it! Again. He's gonna, where's he going now? To the bus! What's he doing? <laughs> oh no! That's right, what, what? Look at the bus! <laughs> But the sad part about it is that that did not count, no. It yeah. hit zero before. It was a second. If this was a 91 second run, <laughs> that would have counted. All right, all right, all right. Let's just, let's just dissect this. This is the first save. Look at this. Very nicely done. Again, he was out of the bounds, so I don't know if they shut him off. They might have shut him off even before the truck started rotating back over. I think they may have, honestly. They may have shut him down before it started rotating back over, and it just luckily came back. And then right here, this if look at him nose the truck down to the ground. Well, look at the air he got, though. I mean, oh, my goodness. And then it's going to go straight up. I didn't think he was going to be able to pull out of this one, I'm going to be honest with you. No, that... But he just got enough grip, and it just pulled it right around. That was amazing for Eli. And then into right. a wheelie. Yeah. <laughs> you think about, Trey, the first two times he's come to this dome is right here. This is an amazing move. The first two times he's come here, his lowest finish has been third. I think he wanted to make sure it was not going to be less than third tonight, but oh, look at this. I wonder why he waited so long to get back on the cast. He wanted to <laughs> see if something... the reverse. Look at I think he wanted to see if something cool was going to happen. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. And then he goes straight. I mean, again, this does not count, yeah. but what a way to end his run. I mean, <laughs> he was so, oh so close to doing a... A reverse backflip off the bus. <laughs> no one would have ever seen that coming. An amazing <laughs> run for Eli Brand the Grave Digger. That might be the run of his career, Trey. <laughs> because this could get... Look at that score. Oh, my goodness. Eli Bright gets a 29, just like he did here in Season 1 when he won the event, Trey. Eli Bright, a 29 is on the hot seat. But there are now three drivers looking to take him down. Can Lathan Strickland get a 29 or higher in this down here? We're going to find out, Trey. No one's ever scored above a 29 in the regular season. Joe, we have three trucks left, and they have one point to get the win. And yep. they got to make history to do it. Mm -hmm. I think a uh, tall <laughs> task, but uh, I mean, these final three drivers, they, you think about it, Lathan Strickland has had a really good rookie season. Chris Jericho has had an amazing rookie season, setting things on fire, you know, and uh, obviously the last year got Matthews Wells and Donkey Kong had a really good run last week, so I mean, these are three drivers that could do it if all the cards align. Yeah, if anyone's going to be able to do it, it's these last three. They're the last three for a reason. I mean, we'll have to see if they're up for the challenge zone. Lathan Strickland and Bounty Hunter here. So far, Lathan, uh, this season has any really good season above inside the top eight in points. So he's right now in the World Finals as it stands. Oh. And going pretty big so far in the Superdome. Not shying away from any of the obstacles. And he's now halfway through the run in the Bounty Hunter. You just got to remember, though, I mean, Eli's run, he started out full throttle. Yeah. Literally, the first hit was full throttle. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. That's not what she wanted. No, and there was still 
a little under 30 seconds left. Lathan Strickland did not want that at all, and this could be detrimental to his points position. You think about how, you know, Brett Sear had a solid run. He was just above the cut line. His teammate Samet Ons got a really good run. Eli Bright had an amazing run. This could really hurt Strickland in the points. I mean, it just had a bad bounce right here. Mm -hmm. it, nothing he really could have done. I mean, it looked like it was going to be fine until, I don't know what exactly happened, but it just sent him upside down. That, that is unfortunate for Lathan Strickland and the Bounty Hunter. We'll see what the scores are, Trey, as they come down to 17 for Strickland. So that ties him right now with Brutus as one of the lowest scores, and it could be a bad points night for Strickland and the Bounty Hunter. Well, Trey, we talk about this man every week. Is it the Chris Jericho or is it not a Mohawk Warrior? We still don't know, but uh, he's been setting the world on fire. The Central Division, his first three finishes, Trey, third, second, and second, and last week was a second because of a loss of the tiebreaker. I mean, I, I I tried talking to his manager, and uh, he hung the phone up on me. So uh, we're going to try it again after this event, and uh, I might have to uh, sneak into, you know, their RV and uh, see if I can find out for myself. Okay, well, uh, we'll, we'll get to that next week. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to see. Right now, Jericho is more focused on the freeze down. So far, that's really good. Run the bus like that. Nice sky wheelie off that as well and pulling into a power wheelie. Oh my goodness. Oh, he better make sure he stops and doesn't hit the wall. That was a very nice job turning around now. Second half of the run for Chris Jericho on the Mohawk Warriors. So he's going to start picking up for sure. Wheeling it into the side. Oh, oh my, my gosh. goodness. <laughs> I don't know how the truck pulled out of that one. I, I, and I don't think he could have done anything to even save. I think the truck just did that itself. I don't think he had time to do anything to no. save that. I mean, that, that truck flipped. So fast it was, it was unbelievable. Well now he has a lot of momentum on his side, that big hit, more huge air out of Chris Jericho's walk Oh huge my air. god! Oh! 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 How is that thing still intact? That bus. Where'd the hood go? That bus is oh, gone. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, he, it's broke. The truck's broke. Oh Front yeah. Front end is broke. Front end is broke. Jericho's gonna... Now that counts! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one counts, but uh... Is he still under? Nope, he's gonna end it right there. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a massive hit <laughs> into the front of that bus. Yeah, that bus is no longer a bus tray. It's just uh, some white sheet metal now. <laughs> but um, what a run by uh, Chris Jericho here. I mean, nothing to be ashamed of, but Ooh. I think we can both agree it was not a thirty. It was not a thirty. No, it's a twenty-six tray. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's right now third place though. So he's looking to keep the top three streak alive, but he has to at least outscore this man. Mathis Wells in the Donkey Kong, the last man out to try and break Eli Bright's heart with a 29-5, a 30, or a 29 a tie. He won in a tie last week, so anything's possible. We'll have to uh, see how this one goes. And uh, we've got a tall order for Donkey Kong here, but it's not yeah. like he hasn't faced uh, bigger enemies before. Oh, oh, no. Did it break? It's broken, Trey. Oh, no, it's broke. And that's not even 20 seconds in for the Donkey Kong. Oh, was what his second hit of the run yeah that was uh, it was a great save but unfortunately it broke the truck now i don't know if it's po i mean it's possible still but he has to be perfect in this run to beat elon yeah his plate pretty much just double of what he has to do to win this and uh you know let alone that he can't really steer the truck right now especially if that broken tire is facing the wrong way it it's not going to turn but right now luckily he has rear steering to help him here gonna hit the back of the racing lane he's just gonna gun it oh no oh my gosh oh my oh, goodness oh! oh he's over the dumpsters is there anyone back there no i th i think they keep that area clear i don't think we've ever had a truck go out of bounds no or literally out of bounds that was literally out of bounds and he had to jump out of bounds to do I now he couldn't really do it he was i think he was trying to turn to get into that ramp but it obviously wasn't turning and look at this i mean oh Oh, my, that could have been so much worse, though. I mean, I hope he's all right, but out of anything that happened, that was honestly probably the best scenario. Yeah, luckily there was that tunnel there. It's a 15-5, so Trey, Eli Bright has won in the Gravedigger in New Orleans again with a 29. We still don't have our first 30. Nope. Is it going to happen this season, Joe? Or is it we get to wait till another one? I mean, we've seen some of the runs this season. I mean, some of them could deserve <laughs> 30. So, I mean, I think you have to be the last truck out if you want to get that 30. Yeah, it would uh, it would be pretty fitting for the last truck to go out in that whatever series it is to be the 30. Well, Trey, I am being told in my ear the points are a massive shakeup, and we're going to go look at them. Trey, 
Chris Jericho has a 19-point lead over his nearest guy. He's the only one locked in. But look at from 3rd down to 11th. They're separated by 9 points, Trey. I, uh, I can't wait for the following weeks here. This is going to get uh, this is gonna get fun. Yeah, there's only one week left. So 9 <laughs> points, 3rd to 12th. What's going to happen? No one knows. I think you can safely <laughs> say Jericho might win the, the Central Division Championship. We'll see who makes it into the World Finals next week, though. Eli Bright, 15 above now after that amazing run.